1994, the magical year that Donkey Kong Country hit shelves. This groundbreaking game is widely acclaimed by critics and fans alike for being a gorgeous, pre-rendered masterpiece. But do you know who's not regarded as a masterpiece? Do you know who doesn't get the credit that he deserves? Did you read the title of this video? Funky Kong, the man, the myth, the legend you've never heard. Funky Kong is by far the most powerful member of the DK crew, and with the release of Tropical Freeze for the Switch, we're finally getting a chance to see his true potential. He's the most athletic Kong, he's got genius level intelligence, and his will to survive led to the defeat of the greatest foe the Kongs have ever faced. Not convinced? Well, I can't say I blame you, but a history lesson will change your mind. Let's start with the origin of species, Funkus Kongus, a rare and majestic ape that emanates chill vibes. Now let's take a glimpse at the first sighting of this majestic beast, and I do mean beast. Look at this mountain of ape muscle. You think you could take Funky in a fight? No chance, he's the same size as DK. And granted, this is probably just a way to include another character by putting a bandana and sunglasses on the Donkey Kong model, but the point stands. The plot of Donkey Kong Country is that K. Rule and his goons steal all of DK's bananas. Funky's not too torn up about it, they're not his bananas, so it's not really his problem. But since he's such a solid dude and a good friend, he flies DK and Diddy around in his barrel plane for free. When's the last time you got a free flight in a private jet? And now you may be thinking, where does an ape even get a plane? And we'll circle back to that. But for now, let's move on to Donkey Kong Country 2. Holy crystal coconuts, he's flying! That's right, the first time you see Funky Kong in Donkey Kong Country 2, he's surfing through the sky like the most radical comet in history. Now, how is that even possible though? Is, do you have magical powers? Well, maybe. Or maybe the engineer behind the barrel biplane built a flying surfboard too. Is that Funky Kong? Is he that genius engineer? Yes. And later, will prove that. Donkey Kong Country 2 is all about Donkey Kong being kidnapped, so why doesn't Funky step in here? Is he secretly just a big jerk? Well, au contraire, my friend. In the first game, King K. Rool is only able to steal the banana horde because Diddy Kong is guarding it as part of his hero training. He fails miserably, he gets sealed in a barrel, and every single banana is stolen. This is Diddy's chance for redemption. What kind of guy would swoop in and steal the glory from a kid that's so eager to prove he can be a hero too? He's doing this little Kong a favor. New game, new me, says Funky. So he buys a dope pair of jorts and a crisp white tank. Looking fresh as Funk, if you ask me. And in addition to the new look, he's got a new shop. It's a rental shop. He's not flying people around. He's renting out that boat he built. Oh, and later on he builds a hovercraft which can float over rocks, and later still he builds a turbo ski which is fast enough to climb a waterfall, and later still he builds a gyrocopter with enough might to climb to the clouds above the northern cremisphere. And all of this with scrap parts that Dixie and Kitty find along their journey. But it doesn't end there. Oh, that's just the tip of this funky iceberg. Remember his ride from the first game? Yeah, look at that piece of junk. Look how mismatched the pieces are. Maybe you found some plane parts in the jungle, slapped them on a barrel, and beep bop boop, you got yourself a barrel plane, friend. But look at the barrel biplane from the second game. It's a lot more sturdy looking. It looks like it was designed and handcrafted. A labor of love, even. And in the third game, Funky seems to build three different vehicles in one day. His engineering skills are displayed more and more with each subsequent game and it makes it seem like he's learning at an alarming rate. But then we remember his favorite invention, the one that's been with him since game one, the surfboard. Now we know he's a master of aviation, but how exactly does he get it to float in midair? Well, that's... that's a great question. There's nothing metal nearby, so we know it's not tied to magnetism. No engine, no propellers, no strings. It's a scientific anomaly. How can he defy physics like that? Simple. His engineering skills exceed that of modern science. Funky Kong is smarter than you. 
and everyone you have ever met. Welcome to the Third Dimension. At this point, K. Rule's real fed up with being trampled by every Kong in the book. So he does what any reasonable person would do. He commissions a massive death ray to destroy his enemies. In addition, he's captured Diddy Kong, Lanky Kong, Tiny Kong, and Chunky Kong. That's right, he's captured so many of those hairy heroes you haven't even heard of most of them until this point. He's come a long way from Banana Thief. Oh, but also he's... also... he's still a Banana Thief. In response, DK shakes it up too by doing absolutely nothing differently. Frankly, it's a miracle he's not captured and rendered unplayable by the start of this game. I mean, it's the case with the last two games bearing his name. Or, wait, maybe it's not a miracle. What's that in the bushes? Is that? No, it can't be. Oh, but it is. Funky's back, baby, and he's ready for war. He's decked out in full camo so K. Rule's goons can't see him. Smart. He's hidden so well, not even the composer of the monkey rap knows where he is during the opening cinematic. And we all know that this guy wouldn't miss out on some old school hip hop. Unlike DK, he's willing to switch up his game to keep the haters on their toes. He knows K rules wise to the typical DK crew attacks by now, but you know what that smelly old croc hasn't seen from the Kongs yet? Guns. So Funky develops an arsenal of specialized weaponry, tailor-made to suit each Kong, and he makes it his personal mission to keep them equipped throughout the battle. And while the ground troops chip away at K rules militia, our main monkey returns to the drawing board so he can work on a weapon to end the war, once and for all. Let's fast forward to the final battle where you play as each of the Kongs. You use the skills you've honed through the game to defeat your greatest foe. Then, Chunky Kong delivers the final haymaker and finishes off K. Rule. Great ending, right? Well, it would be. But K. Rule ain't no punk. So he gets right up after the punch, and just when you start thinking, ah, this guy is unstoppable, in walks the real unstoppable one. It's funky, and he's got a boot launcher. He dishes out a literal butt kicking so bad that K. Rule is missing from every main series Donkey Kong game since. Funky is the one that saves DK Island from being destroyed. Now believe it or not, there's even more that we can draw from this game. You remember the barrel cannons, right? Those round, steel and force beauties that are a core part of every Donkey Kong game? You ever ask yourself who made them, and who peppers them around these treacherous environments? Well, let's take a closer look at DKC1. There are four levels before you visit Funky Flights, and in none of those four levels do you need a barrel cannon to get through. Then we visit our Funky friend, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is the first time that a Kong uses a barrel as a means of transportation. And do you want to guess what the next level is? Barrel Cannon Canyon, where, this might shock you, there are quite a few barrel cannons. Okay, full disclosure here. I'm not 100% sure that Funky built these. There's no certifiable proof in the manual, but it kind of seems like more of a stretch to me to assume there's another mechanical genius Kong who can A, build wooden structures that float in mid-air, B, they can propel the contents of a barrel without damaging the precious cargo, and C, just so happened to set up a barrel cannon display right next to the headquarters of a rival inventor. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the list of Funky's patents. After stopping King K. Rule, the Kongs enter a time of peace. With no enemies to challenge them, Donkey Kong Country games just sort of stopped happening. The GameCube instead saw the release of Donkey Konga, a rhythm game where you hit the bongos to the jungle beat. With the prevalence of bongo and funk music, Funky Kong was a natural fit as a playable character. It's a shame that Namco didn't think so during development. And with that, Funky Kong is absent from a Donkey Kong game for the very first time since his initial appearance in 1994. Happy 10 year anniversary! This marks the beginning of the Dark Ages. Between 1999 and 2007, Funky only appears in two titles in the US. It's the ultimate disrespect to the true hero of DK Island. Alas, a glimmer of hope beams through the clouds. Funky makes his playable debut in King of Swing for the Game Boy Advance. Remember when I said he's just as tough as DK? Well, DK's attack power is 3 out of 5 in this game, and our boy Funky's 4 out of 5. He's actually stronger than DK. 
Later that year, they finally added Funky as a playable character in a console game, Donkey Konga 3. But it's a case of too little too late. Konga 3 is a Japan-only release, so nobody in the States gets to play as Funky. lame -o. Barrel Blast is an often overlooked racing game where players use weird, hip-mounted bongo engines to fly across the track. Sure, it's a horrible aesthetic, but I mean it's 2007 and the guy's wearing cut-off jorts. Hard to argue with the performance, though. 5 out of 5 speed. If you can't steer like a pro, don't even bother. He's too fast for you. Whatever futuristic jungle tech Funky implements into these barrels, it has some amazing capabilities. If a little slap can generate that kind of thrust, imagine what would happen if a scaled-up bongo dropped from the sky and landed right on, I don't know, maybe a pirate ship? It'd be a real shame if it happened to such a nice boat, wouldn't it, K. Rule? And with that kind of tech stacked against him, all K. Rule can do is count his blessings that Funky would rather use it to race than build bombs. The Kremlin King sees now that much like a barrel race, he'll never beat Funky in an arms race either. And that leads us here, friendly races between Kongs and Kremlings. Who would have guessed? Peaceful times between them, brought to you by the genius mind of Funky Kong. Let's talk Mario Kart Wii. This cameo is where a lot of younger fans were first introduced to Funky, and it's a big deal for his legacy too. This takes the mind and reflexes of Funky Kong and throws him into the Mushroom Kingdom. We get to compare his driving ability to humans, Yoshis, and whatever ungodly fungus monster Toad is. And not shockingly, he's the best there is. Not only is he the greatest pilot on DK Island, but he's also the best racer in the Mushroom Kingdom. And it's not even close. 32 tracks, 22 funky records. And honestly, this should be the case. In his first appearances, Funky flies around and engineers his vehicles for maximum bodaciousness. Then in 64, he becomes a weapons manufacturer. That's the recipe for a Mario Kart victory. One good vehicle, one great driver, a weapons expert. Funky and Mario Kart are a match made in heaven. But Crybaby Mario didn't invite him back on Wii U, probably because he was tired of losing every race to such a supreme being. You gotta free up character slots for important characters like Metal Mario, and Tanuki Mario, and Baby Mario. Right, Mario? At least he got invited to play baseball. Breaking news. DK has more power than Funky in this one. Congrats to the big fella. He deserves it. And while DK is the Babe Ruth of this game, Funky's definitely no slouch. He's nailed down the two things that make him a Hall of Famer in his own right. He's a solid fielder, and a grand slamming monster in the batter's box. That versatility grants him a spot in the heart of your lineup without having to sacrifice fielding like most sluggers would. You want a big guy with a good reach and better reflexes at first? Funky. You want a solid catcher to keep home plate safe from wild pitches and stolen bases? Funky. You want a right fielder with a cannon arm that can throw out a Yoshi rounding third for the game tying run in extra innings? Funky. Easy first pick. Yeah, he's uh... I, I don't even want to talk about this one. Happy 2014. Funky turns 20 and the upcoming game Tropical Freeze promises to have a new playable Kong upon release. Can this be Funky's time to shine? Nope. It's cranky time. And I ain't even mad. It's important to respect your elders. I mean, Funky does. He took him water skiing, he made his rocket barrel one of the best, but most importantly, he listens to him. He values his advice, and he soaks in the wistful ramblings of a Kong who longs for the good old days. So our main monkey buys up Grandpa's stock and sends him out to adventure. What's not to love about a family man who looks out for his grandpa? Then, 2018 ushers in the unthinkable. The brand new Funky Mode marks the first playable appearance of the coolest Kong in a country game. And whoa, mama, was it worth the wait! Each of the Kongs has their own special ability. Diddy can glide, Dixie can double jump, Cranky can bounce across spikes, and DK can... have his face on the cover. So what's Funky's power? He can glide, double jump, bounce across spikes, and have his name on the cover as well. No matter which way you put the awesome reversible sleeve. And as if having the abilities of every other Kong wasn't enough, he can also hold his breath and somersault forever. 
Oh, wait, what's that you say? He's still not great enough? Okay, well, how's this? While every other Kong takes two hits, he can take five. He's an unstoppable force on a mission. Wait, hold the phone though. What is his mission? Why does he play such an active role in this particular adventure? Well, does he look like the kind of guy who likes when the tropics freeze over? No. To me, he looks more like the guy who will single-handedly destroy your army for freezing him out of the surf for a few minutes. When you mess with the surf, you incur the wrath of the most dangerous Kong and his flying surfboard. Oh, uh, speaking of, we get the answer here to what makes it fly. That scientific breakthrough has been right in front of our faces the whole time. And I can't believe I'm saying this. <sighs> it's bananas. Think about it. K. Rule, the Tiki's, Freddy's boys, even Bowser. Everyone that comes to DK Island wants to get their hands on that sweet, sweet potassium. But why? Well, these aren't your grandpappy's bananas. They float in midair. Drinking their juice prevents your death. Getting a hundred of them lets you live again after your death. It gives life to things that weren't even alive to begin with. It can make wood float. In Tropical Freeze, Fungi uses a banana peel to wax his board. And we've just seen how a little juice can make a wooden structure levitate. Whether the powers are mystical or scientific, it doesn't really matter. Either way, Funky has learned how to tap into the raw potential of that golden crescent. Let's step outside the game universe for a second. The DK games can be really unforgiving. The only thing separating you from those nightmarish game over screens is raw skill and a fistful of balloons. But some gamers want a little bit of a more laid back and forgiving con game. So why not have a more laid back version of DK welcome them to the jungle? Retro hits the mark again. Funky mode is an easy mode that makes you excited to play it instead of ashamed. And it opens the door to Switch owners that may have otherwise passed on the title because of the reputation the series has for inducing rage. Not only is Funky smart canonically, but making him playable turns out to be pretty smart too. It's also a step towards the credit he's deserved for so long. He's sometimes written off as just a side character. People know him from the new Funky mode meme, or as that obnoxious douche that wins every Mario Kart race. Or, oh, uh, you could skip this level, we don't need the plane guy. But he's so much more to Donkey Kong Country. He's a role model for DK to strive to be more like. He's proof that even if you're a hero, you've still got room to grow. And it feels good to see him finally come into the spotlight. Retro has really done him justice. And I think his reputation's on the way up. I used to worry he'd never get the recognition he deserves. Playable Funky Kong? In a country game? Yeah, sure. When DK Island freezes over. But here we are. And I couldn't be more excited for the future.